Hi, welcome to the Museum Collection Centre. It is lovely to have you all here with us today and we're going to take you around and show you a kind of a bit of behind the scenes as to what the Collection Centre is and what it is that we do here with the objects in storage. So the Museum Collection Centre is our off-site storage facility that stores everything that's not currently on display at any one of our Birmingham Museum's Trust sites. As you can see, there are objects everywhere. Um, some people describe the collection centre as a bit of an Aladdin's cave, a bit of a treasure trove. Uh, one visitor described it as Indiana Jones meets Ikea, which we kind of like, very organised. Um, so in these spaces, um, we have things from our science and industry collection, we have things from our archaeology collection, social history, um, and lots of other objects on different other floors as well, so we'll take you around there. So this is the ground floor extension, so we've just moved from the warehouse into the ground floor extension, both areas that the public are free to have a look around when they're here for our open afternoons or our guided tours. Um, this one is a particular favourite just because it has lots of the cars and the motorbikes and our lovely Busy Bee steam tractor. Um, so we built the extension building as soon as we moved into this property to ensure that we had enough space essentially to move all of the objects from our other off-site stores that were dotted around Birmingham to centralise them all into one place um, but also to make sure that we still had space going forward when we continually collecting. So we have lots of weird and wonderful objects in the collection. I would implore anyone when they came on site to find something, to not find something that they enjoyed. There is something for everyone. In this space in particular we have the cars, the motorbikes, we have some of the IT collection uh, and the computer collection and then on the floor here we have the word source and that was from the HP source factory that was in Birmingham. When they were closing that down we thought we'll take kind of the HP and the word source and have that here in storage which a lot of you will remember that kind of building. We also have objects in the social history collection from the building as well, so bits of like HP source bottles that are very old, um, and we also have HP which is on the back wall behind us. So come on down. We have some fire engines. So here we have some fire pumps, some very old fire engines. So the one just in the middle is from 1939, and the one at the back is from 1898, and it was horse drawn. So you can see kind of at the front where the, the kind of horse drawn area would have been. Uh, and then this fire engine here was from 1913 and it was used specifically for a factory in Birmingham, the British Thomas Houston factory in Blackheath. And this is only one of 14 that are remaining in the world. So quite an important piece for us and one of the most original because once it went out of service, it remained in the factory. So we do kind of preserve that. And for most of the object, we go for preservation over restoration, just so that we kind of can say that when researchers come in, they are the kind of most original pieces on them. Um, and it's just an, another aspect of the collection. Behind you is the castle runabout car, important for us as it is one of a kind, so it's a prototype and the Castle Motor Company made it when demand for four-wheel cars came out. They put this into pre-production and went bust shortly after, so this is the, the only one of its kind, so very, very important piece. So we have a large collection uh, within our science industry collection of machines and engines that are all really important to Birmingham. And I'm just going to point out a couple of them just in terms of bits that are interesting on them. So this is a button making machine from uh, a company that's in Portland Street. And if you just want to kind of have a little up close, you can, you can almost see on there where the buttons and the kind of manufacturing would have been. The little buttons would have gone on here. Um, and it's that level of detail that you can get to when you come here. As you can get, we do have our yellow lines out, so you can only get so close, but that's for the protection of the collection. But you can really get up close and personal, unlike, say, in a museum environment where things are kind of behind display cases. So behind me here are scales from the Avery Company. So Avery was a very large company in Birmingham and actually supplied scales and weights and measures to across the whole world. We recently put a picture of this on uh, social media, on Twitter, and we had somebody in India that also replied to say, we, we have got the same one over here. Um, again, social media just being another way that we kind of get objects out in the collection, out to, to people in a different type of access. 
Um, down here is quite a popular one, is our bin lorry. So the bin lorry was used and built in 1938 and actually was run um, on battery power. So the bin lorry would go out, it would collect the rubbish, it would come back, it would burn the rubbish, which would run the generator, which would charge the battery, and then out there would go again. So that is kind of um, a really good use of um, being renewable kind of source of energy. Uh, but this didn't last very long when they started to then use petrol. So on an economical side, it was great. From a practical side, when we've spoken to somebody that used to work with these bin lorries, they kind of said to us that whilst that was good, actually they had to, if you just come around here, you can see that when they collected the rubbish, they would have to lift up the hatches to then throw the rubbish in. So actually for the workers, the kind of model didn't work that well for them compared to what they would now. But economically, obviously running on battery power would have been a lot, a lot better. So we have a lovely collection of motorbikes. Um, everyone, when I kind of do tours or tell them where I work, asks me what my favourite object is and that changes all the time, as you can see, because we've just got so, so many objects here with us. So it changes depending on the story. So my current favourite is this motorbike. It's a DKW2000 motorcycle and it was donated to us in 1986. So um, a couple of years ago, a gentleman rung me to say, in quite a panic, that he uh, had given his motorbike to the old science museum that when it shut he thought it, it had just gone and now he'd heard about us and wondered if we'd actually got this motorbike so I was able to go and look in our object history files and on our database find the guy's name and tell him that actually we do have it here and he was completely over the moon we then asked him to come to site he came with all of his family he was extremely happy to kind of show them his motorbike and that it was here in storage for everyone to see uh, he then proceeded to tell us information that we didn't know so that was that he himself had put the horns just here and the wind mirrors onto the motorbike because actually when they were made they didn't have those function but that, and I quote, when he was driving around Birmingham, it would have been a nightmare if he didn't have those safety features. So a good bit of information, but kind of importantly for me working in what we call collections care, the only way that I could kind of match him up with his object is by having the, what we call documentation. So that's the paper information that comes with the object that tells us where it's come from, what it is, who owned it, any kind of extra information like the, uh, the kind of DVLA equivalent records, any kind of manuals that came with it, I could pull out all of that information and tell him actually your motorbike is here. If museums don't have that kind of information, the object then becomes redundant, you don't know whose it is, where it's come from. So part of our role, which I kind of mentioned earlier with collections management, is being able to know whose these objects are and what they are to make sure that we can then understand them, manage them properly and obviously share them with with everybody else. Now we're on the first floor. So on here, we have, or in here, we have our furniture collection, which is this section just behind me. We also have our natural sciences collection, which is the taxidermy, so stuffed animals, shell collection, insect collection. And we have our wooden objects as well, which is called the Pinto collection, which is one of our largest collection areas. A very weird and wonderful collection. So it was collected by Eva and Edward Pinto and their collecting policy was simply to collect anything wooden. So we've got really beautiful Morchlin ware boxes uh, that have beautiful detail on them and show woodworking at its finest, round to a wooden leg, and then wooden dog tongs, which specifically separated dogs that were fighting outside of church. So a very random collection, but a very a kind of interesting collection for us. Okay, so as part of our natural sciences collection, we have uh, objects from lots of different collectors from all different categories. This one here is quite impressive. It's uh, our bird dioramas that are beautiful kind of examples of taxidermy. So they are stored from here and they go all the way down to the bottom down there. And we have it on record that Chase, who was the collector, he collected so many dioramas that he had to move house three times just to be able to store them all. And now we're lucky enough to have them here with us in store. So we are now on the second floor extension and here we have lots of different objects from different collection areas. So we have what we call our world cultures collection. We have our social history collection. We also have costume and textile. 
and we have our archaeology collection on this floor as well. So we also have costume and textile on this floor. So as you can see here, this is um, some of the wedding dresses in our collection, so they're very beautiful. Uh, and these are all stored behind what we kind of call curtains as another layer of protection from things like light and also from pests and things like that. So each collection area we also take into consideration their needs conservation wise. Uh, this is kind of an added protection for those. So we're back in the warehouse and this is our final stop. Um, we've kind of given you a little tour around all the behind the scenes things that we do and what we house here. But we'd obviously love you to come and actually see the Museum Collection Centre. So we are open the last Friday of every month by appointment only. We have our guided tours and we've got our big open day on uh, in September, Saturday the 12th. Um, for me, I've worked here since 2012, so a long, long time, and the store still surprises me. There is still something new to me every single day, um, and I'm very honoured to be able to kind of be in the store and look around at, at everything, and I would kind of love that, to share that with you as well. So we hope you enjoy having this behind the scenes access, and we hope to see you soon.